Yo, from Fast Tech, in this one, we're gonna be disassembling a UK-based PS4, which is a model CUH2216. You can check the model number by looking at the back in here, where it says model. This one is gonna say CUH2216, right next to the power port. The only difference between this 2116 and the 2115, as they're known in North America, or 2100, as they're known in Asia, more, more specifically Japan, is the fact that they're sold in different countries. When I open this, the power supply model is gonna be different in this. It's gonna be an N15 or N16, I believe an N16 model. But the power supplies and parts are completely interchangeable between these and a North American unit. And after PS3 and the Xbox 360 generation, none of these systems are region locked. In the past, it used to be where if you bought an NTSC, U system uh, in North America, you'd only be able to run North American games or games that were allowed to be run on that region code. But that is no longer the case as we move into a more globalized and international world. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to disassemble a CUH2116 for our UK or European audience. We've been getting some orders for Europe, so I figured I might as well start disassembling European consoles as well. Let's get started. So to disassemble our PS4, you're gonna need some tools, including our FastTech Pro Auto Kit, which includes all the bits, including the Philips and the Torx T8 bit that you need to disassemble this device. We are based out of Canada, and we also have a location in Los Angeles in the United States, but we ship worldwide. So if you do have a 2116 unit and you need parts or the toolkit that you need to disassemble, this PS4, do check us out at fasttechstore.com. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the hard drive. I'll tell you why you need to replace the hard drive. If you're getting the PS4 cannot start error message, which starts with a CE, you most likely need to replace the hard drive and reinstall the software. I did a detailed video on this, which is one of my most popular videos, and you can check that out on my channel. So to remove the hard drive, you gotta lift up this L-shaped piece like this. It's gonna come right off. Then we're gonna remove this Phillips screw that hides underneath. It has the PlayStation symbols on it. We're gonna remove this screw. Then we're gonna pull on this flap here and the hard drive's gonna come out. That's our hard drive right there. Um, to replace the hard drive, we still have to take it out of the take it out of this external enclosure, which is also held in by Phillips screws. This right here is a one terabyte hard drive. And sometimes these do fail. Lots of times if you remove the hard drive, put it back in, it will fix your problem. If you're getting the PS4, cannot start error message. But if this thing is making ticking noises or even after removing and putting it back in, you're not able to get the system going, you can order a new hard drive from our website. I'll include links in the description box in the top comment. And we sell 500 gigabyte, one terabyte. We also sell SSDs on our website. So if you're looking to upgrade this to a solid state drive, we got those options for you as well. Links in the description box and top comment, and you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. To access any more hardware in the system, including the power supply or the motherboard, we're gonna have to remove the covers. And to remove the top cover, you can do that by lifting it up from the front like this. It's gonna come right off. Now, if your PS4 is overheating, lots of times you can blow out dust from the fan with a compressed air can. But if it is overheating to a point where the system shuts off, then simply blowing this area with a compressed air can is not going to help. This right here is the power supply. If your PS4 is not turning on at all, that means when you press the power button at the front, there's no beep, there's no sound. The system does not turn on. That means the power supply is dead. And I'm gonna show you guys how to replace that. You're gonna remove a few screws here. There's four of them, but there's some screws on the other side that we're gonna have to remove as well. And to remove that side, we have to remove this cover, which to remove that, we have to remove this warranty sticker or what used to be the warranty sticker, but none of these old PS4s have any warranty with Sony anymore. 
in case you do removing this will void your warranty with sony if you're outside the united states because in the u.s due to an ftc ruling this is no longer considered a warranty sticker and that has been a law for a long time but manufacturers were putting these on their systems anyways in violation of it but due to a recent ruling they've been stopped from doing that in the united states the land of the free home of the brave we're going to remove this warranty sticker right here not in america though and then we're gonna put our torx t8h bit from our fast tech pro kit and we're gonna remove this torx t8h screw and we're gonna remove this torx t8h screw that hides underneath once that screw is out of the way, nothing stopping us from, remo from removing the bottom cover. I'm gonna lift it up from the back like this. Take it off from the front and boom, it's off. Now we're gonna flip it back over because we are trying to remove the power supply. There's two Phillips screws and two Torx. We're gonna remove the Torx screws first. That's another one right there. You'll notice the one on the right side is longer than the one on this side. So take note of that. Now for the Phillips screws. I'm gonna lift up this piece. Now I'm gonna flip the console over. We're gonna remove this screw here. This screw here, this screw here, and now our power supply should be free. I'm gonna flip the console over one more time and then lift up the power supply from the front. Be careful, there's a, still a cable connected at the front that we're gonna have to remove, so don't be too rough here. Pull that out. There's that cable here at the front that we're gonna grab by the connector. Like that. And that's the power supply right there. As you can see, it's got some Asian writing on it, which you will not find on a North American PS4 CUH2115, which is what the equivalent of this would be in, in the United States or Canada. It says N17160P1A and in the united states the model number would start with an adp for the system and if you need a new power supply we sell these on our website and we ship worldwide use the coupon code youtube for a discount since we are going to be removing everything out of the system at this point we're going to remove these screws as well now we're going to flip the console over and since we're trying to get to the motherboard and the disk drive and the rest of it, we're going to remove all of these screws here. And there's about 500,000 in total. All of them are Phillips, some black, some silver. And you can use a Phillips size zero, which is included in our kit to remove these screws. Now we're gonna remove this antenna cable by lifting it up. We're gonna get these cables out. One of them has a clip, this one here in the middle, we're gonna lift it up, pull that out, pull this one out here, pull this one out here. This is for the power button and the jack button, we're gonna pull this one out too. And these three are for the disc drive in case you guys are wondering. There's a fan connector here that we can pull out like this. And now this plate should be free. We're gonna get this out of the way. And now we have access to the motherboard. This right here is a model SAF004. You could have an SAF002301. 
and the previous models have an SAE or SAA motherboard. We sell all the motherboards on our website and the links for all of the 2116 or 2115 or 2100 boards, which are basically the same thing, same model number. We sell them on our website. Again, links in the description box. We're the number one supplier for these motherboards. Even iFixit does not have them anymore and we still keep them in stock. I'm very, very proud of that as a much smaller company than theirs that we're able to do this. And again, a lot of the credit goes to you guys. Thank you for supporting us over all these years. We're gonna remove this heat sink clamp by removing these two Phillips screws. And now we're gonna remove this piece. And that's the heat sink clamp, which is part of our screw set. So if you wanna buy the screw set, for the system, we also sell the screw set as well. And a lot of you guys apparently lose your screws somehow. So, but don't we all? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna lift this up here. There's still that power supply connector that we're gonna have to remove. We can separate the cable, pinch it from the side and just wiggle and pull. Be very careful with this process. You don't wanna rip out the connector and pull it out. This one is a little bit harder to pull than most. And that's the motherboard. Now we get a better look at the board. That's the Bluetooth chip right here. If your PS4 is not connecting to your controller wirelessly anymore, even if it's plugged in with the cable, it's not work. It's not gonna work since in the PS operating system, the controller only connects via Bluetooth, even if it's plugged in. Only in safe mode would the controller work with a cable, but otherwise it wouldn't work if this chip was faulty. That's the CMOS battery that you'd have to eventually replace because you'll get a CE error. And this is the error that you're gonna get if this battery dies and your system's not gonna read games off the disc or even off the hard drive. And your date and time's not gonna save and that's because this $1 battery has died and it renders the whole system useless. So this is how you replace the battery. You just pull this one out. Uh, you do have to depress this clip here, pull the battery out, put a new one in. We sell these batteries on our website as well. Link in the description box as always. And uh, again, this is the SAF004. In the 2115 systems, there's multiple different variants of this board and we sell them all so like i said links in the description box that's the apu chip right there the graphics chip and the cpu there's another piece that a lot of people misplace and they don't know what it is and that's this piece right here which goes here and there's a screw that goes all the way through onto this heat sink and that's what this piece is just a little fyi for you guys got a lot of youtube comments regarding this and the mystery is now solved for you guys now we're going to remove the heat sink and we're just going to get that out of the way there's one more screw here that we have to remove once that's out of the way heat sink's going to come out or if you're getting the ps4 is too hot error message this heat sink is going to be full of dust more dust than you see here this is nothing but after a few years, more dust would have added to this dust, stuck to it, and then it would have made a bigger and bigger and bigger dust area till this whole heat sink would have been blocked. And then the system would have stopped working till you open it up, clean this heat sink out. At that point, I would also recommend replacing the thermal paste here and on the APU chip with Thermal Grizzly, which is a paste that we recommend and sell on our website. So let's get the heat sink and the board out of the way. And finally, we're down to the fan and the disk drive, two very essential components, both of which fail quite frequently. And to remove them, we have to get through everything. And there's a little dead baby fly in here. I'm not sure what that is, maybe a mosquito, but rest in peace to its poor soul. And we're gonna remove the fan we're removing these two Phillips screws. Again, the Phillips zero is gonna work here as well. And 
Now the fan is gonna come out. This is a Nidec G85, G12, MS, 1CN, 5.6, J14. Um, I was a young man when I started reading that title and by the end of it, I feel like an old man because of how long it is. But anyways, we sell this fan on our website as well. We got the lowest price around. And we're the only ones who have these parts in stock these days, it seems like. Get your game up, I fix it. Actually don't, so I can keep taking your market share. Anyways, we're gonna remove these screws that hold the disc drive in. There's one that holds the disc drive and the antenna. Well, it actually holds the antenna onto the disc drive. We're gonna get that out of the way. get the power button cable out of the way and now the disk drive is going to come out and that's the disk drive right there and yes to get to it you have to literally remove everything and sometimes the laser in these dies and it's not it's just going to stop reading your game completely the disk won't even spin if the laser is dead and then you definitely have to replace the disk drive but in some cases objects get stuck in a disk drive like if it's making ticking noises or if it's not accepting the disc it's most likely due to the fact that maybe you have a small child and they've stuck something in there we've seen that a lot over the years of us servicing these things where objects particularly playing cards or like coins or small objects get shoved into the disc drive by a toddler and these stop working and if that's the case you got to remove these two screws this piece is going to come off and you can remove any objects that might be obstructing the disk drive put it back together and you should be good but if the disk drive is not spinning at all and if you remove the object still not working most likely your laser is damaged and if that's the case we sell these disk drives on our website links in the top comment and the description box and like with all the other parts you can use the coupon code youtube for a discount the last thing i'm going to remove is this power and eject button just to say I disassembled the whole thing. We're gonna get this Phillips screw out of the way, which is a little bit more difficult than usual to take out. Once that's out, the power and eject button is out of the way. And the model number, if you guys are wondering, is a TSW004. Okay, that's the power button right there, and that's the eject button. And that's the speaker that makes that beep sound when you turn the system on. That's another video from Fast Tech. Don't forget to smash that like button. Smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. And check out my vlog channel in which I travel the world and I record my adventures. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech, and I'll see you in the next one.